now, metalheads. It's Black Metal Werewolf making a brand new video for you this week. So when it comes to metalheads, I think it's safe to say that many of us are incredibly dedicated and prideful of our love for heavy metal music. And rightfully so, everything about it is pretty awesome. But with that being said, I think it's about time we start acknowledging there are a few hard to swallow pills when it comes to heavy metal. And that's what I want to talk about today. So I'm sure many of you, like me, at some point in your lives have gotten into an argument with somebody else over what is the best type of music. And as metalheads, in an argument like that, we all have that one great trump card, which is, at least metal bands all write their own music. I mean, in, when it comes to pop music, rap music, country music, it's a well-known fact that these guys do not write their own songs. It's a very common thing in the music industry. But we as metalheads know 100% for a fact that all of our bands write their own songs. Except that they don't. Many metalheads need to acknowledge that many of our favorite bands that are signed to record labels do not 100% write all of their own songs. Like I said, this is a very common practice in the music industry. And do you honestly think that record labels are paying producers tens of thousands of dollars just to stand behind some glass and say, that wasn't good, do it again? No, these producers are like talented songwriters and lyric writers. They are being paid these big dollars so to have their hands all over this project to make good songs so the album will sell. That's the whole point of them being there. So if that means they're gonna help write some lyrics or fix some music, that's what they're going to do. That's why they're being paid tens of thousands of dollars. So uh, I guarantee you, if you were to go to your music collection and get any of the liner notes, chances are at least one of the songs was not written by that band. Or their producer had their hands in it one way or another, be it through writing the music or performing some of the music or helping writing some lyrics. They 100% do not do it by themselves. Now, obviously, there are some underground bands that aren't signed to record labels that do, do their all their own music because they literally have no choice. They don't have professional writers or producers to do it for them. So yeah, I can give it to them. They're purists. But once you get into the music industry, like we all know the music industry is inherently evil, but I mean, we all have to acknowledge that is a big part of it. Uh, just for example, Iron Maiden. Everyone knows Iron Maiden, huge band. Not too long ago, they could not play the song Hallowed Be Thy Name live because the producer on the album Number of the Beast said, I wrote that song and I want my cut. Now, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. They did reach some sort of settlement. So that guy must have had some ground to stand on to be able to make that claim and get some sort of settlement out of the band. Now, the next point isn't 100% targeted at metalheads, but it is something a lot of metalheads need to hear. And that is going back and living the Viking lifestyle isn't all it's cracked up to be. Now, I'm sure many of you have noticed how heavily romanticized the idea of the Vikings are in today's media. From TV, movies, video games, and indeed heavy metal music, we all have this fantastic idea of how cool the Vikings were. When in reality, if you lived back in that time period, it would be pretty fucking terrible. Now, when you close your eyes and you think of the Vikings, you think of these like seven and a half foot tall guys, giant muscles, wearing wolf skin, carrying big axes, cutting down people, taking their women and their gold to go back to their halls with their mead. But that's really not the way it was back then. First of all, the average height of a man back then was only about five feet tall. There just wasn't enough food and nutrition for men to get that big. I mean, I'm sure there were some freaks of nature back then who were able to hit six foot or above, but in reality, most of them would have been five foot or under. Most of these people probably didn't have teeth because when you don't have enough nutrition, your teeth fall out. And from what I've been able to read, a lot of people back then had to chew like bark off of trees just to get some nutrition. And when you chew bark, it grounds your teeth down to nubs. So if you did have any teeth, they wouldn't be very big. You'd be kind of stuck with a bunch of little nubs in your mouth. And I know like the their alphabet, the runes were so cool. You know, except for the fact that most people back then probably couldn't read or write. I mean, the idea of literacy has only been around for about a hundred years. Like, I know for a fact that my great-grandpa could not read. A lot of the people that I went to school with, their parents could not read. 
because they lived in a farming town. And when you were a kid back then, you only went to school to the age where, you know, you weren't useful on the farm. Once you were old enough to actually, you know, do something on the farm, your parents took you out of school. You don't need to learn how to fucking read and write. You're hauling hay. That's what you're doing from now on. So, and you think that these people back in the Viking age were putting their kids through school so they could learn how to read and write? It's not a thing. So yeah, the idea of the Vikings, you know, it's, it's a cool fantasy. There's no doubt about it. But if you were to go back and live back then, you'd be dead within a week. Just the idea of living outside of our modern comforts, you know, most people wouldn't survive. I checked the forecast for the following week. It's going to be raining here for the next seven days. If you take the average person and try to make them live outside in the rain for seven days, they are going to be dead from exposure in no time at all. So all these people who think they would make these amazing Vikings, I'm sure you'd be taller than everybody, but there's no fucking way you would survive that lifestyle. It wouldn't happen. Now, another hard to swallow pill for a lot of metalheads is that mainstream metal media is essentially dead and it's probably never going to come back. Now, I remember when I was a teenager and heavy metal music was my entire life. All I ever wanted was some awesome TV show that revolved around metal, either talking about it or playing music videos, something like that. That would have been the best thing in my life. But being in Canada, I didn't have VH1 or MTV. Now I'm well aware that there were shows like that, like That Metal Show and Headbangers Ball. But even after looking up those shows, we need to acknowledge that those have been off the air for a very, very long time. Uh, that metal show on VH1 has been off the air for almost 10 years at this point, and Headbangers Ball, the first run of that show, ended in 95, I think? So it's been decades, and then the second run of that show has been off the air for just over 10 years now. So, I mean, if these things were going to happen again, I mean, it's taking its dear sweet time. 10 years is a really big hunk of time for, you know, a major TV network or a movie or something like that to finally corner the metalhead market and make that one show. Now, I'm sure plenty of you are saying, you know, there are plenty of metal YouTubers, and you're absolutely right, but I don't consider this mainstream metal media. A lot of us are just dedicated fans with decent cameras and an internet connection. You don't see, like, giant major network television shows dedicated to heavy metal. And I understand why. Those shows probably wouldn't do that well in the ratings. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure plenty of metalheads would watch them, but enough to sustain a television show? Probably not. You know, even if a major TV network were to approach me and offer me a show about metal, I would probably take it, but the chances of that show lasting more than one season, mm, nah, it's, you know, it's really probably not going to happen. So uh, I like the idea of, you know, metal and rock still existing on TV and on the radio, but it just really doesn't. I remember a few years ago, I was in my car and I was flipping through the radio stations, and this one station had a Metal Monday section. I'm like, oh cool, this is awesome. And then they proceeded to not play a single metal song. All they played was like Led Zeppelin and Grand Funk Railroad. And I get those bands are like proto-metal, but it's not like modern day metal. They didn't play Metallica or Slayer or Black Sabbath or, you know, anything that you or I would call metal to this day. So it's, you know, it just doesn't really exist. It is very unfortunate and I don't want to acknowledge it, but it's true. Now for this video, I wanted to do one more hard to swallow pill for metalheads. And I wrote it down in my phone that we as metalheads need to acknowledge that Metalocalypse and Death Clock are done. We're never getting a new movie or a season of the TV show and another album. It's not going to happen. We just have to acknowledge it, let it go, and let it die in peace. Except I am 100% wrong on that because about two weeks ago, it was announced that Death Clock is going to be getting another movie, another album, and they're going on tour for that album. So not only am I wrong, I've never been more happy to be wrong because we're getting more Death Clock. Even though that is cutting this video a little short, we are finally getting more and I am so pumped for it. So those are just a few hard to swallow pills for metalheads. But now, of course, I want to get your guys' opinion on all of this. What do you think of the things I said in this video? Do you agree or do you disagree? Do you have a few of your own hard to swallow pills that a few metalheads need to hear? Please leave them down in the comments. I would love to know and I'm sure a lot of other metalheads would like to hear as well. And now, like my past videos, I either do an album recommendation or an album warning. And today is another recommendation. The band is Cradle of Filth, the album is Existence is Futile. 
Now, I know a lot of people don't like Cradle of Filth, and a lot of their criticisms are valid most of the time. They have released a, a handful of shitty albums, there's no doubt about it. But they have released a handful of good albums too, and I think this is one of them. It came out a few months ago, and I very much enjoyed it. My personal favorite tracks are Crawling King Chaos and Suffer Our Dominion, but there are a handful of other really good songs on here too. So check it out, you know, if, you're, if you still don't like it, that's totally fair, I understand. But if you listen to it and you might find a few songs you do like, you know, that's pretty cool. So, once again, that's Cradle of Filth, Existence is Futile. So, that's it for today's video. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of today's video, checking out a few of my past videos and sharing them with a few of your friends while you're at it. If you would like to keep up with me on a more daily basis, you can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram, and I also have patches for sale, so if you would like to get your very own, you can click right over here. There's also a link down in the description. Overall, thank you very much for watching, guys, and don't forget to stay brutal.